Hi everyone, this video is about the sacred secretion in relation to the northern path of ancient Nordic tradition. And this video is in response to at James Coughlin 6357. So thank you very much for your request. And let's have a look at some of the key symbols and their association with the sacred secretion and kundalini energy. In Nordic teachings, as in many others, we find the symbol of a tree. And the Norse tree is called Yggdrasil. This is parallel with the tree of life in Kabbalah, which is of course associated with the nervous system of the temple body. On an energetic level, ancient depictions of a tree at the centre of the earth and indeed the body can be viewed as an analogy for the trunk and arches formed by the macrocosmic and microcosmic toroidal energy fields that surround all um, entities no matter how big or small and this tree Yggdrasil Yug I think I'm saying that correctly hopefully is divided into three parts firstly the roots then the middle um, or the trunk and the third part is the branches so the roots are where we find hell Niflheim and Muspelheim. And hell represents the subconscious mind and the shadow aspect of the psyche. These are the parts of ourselves that we often suppress, that we try and push down or ignore, including our unresolved traumas, um, fears and desires and things that you know we don't feel comfortable as being part of us. Niflheim is the realm of ice and cold and that is often associated with the rivers of Havelgamir and Havelgamir is known as the navel of the world or the world, the central vortex of earth and the whirlpool or fountain within Meru. And Merudanda is a symbolic name for the human spinal cord, an extension of the cosmic spine said to be parallel with Mount Murray. The ascent of the soul through different levels of Muru Danda is parallel to the ascent of life force energy through the chakras of the body. And it's been said that every sixth hour, the great whirlpool, Havelgamir, reverses its direction, alternating between drawing in and expelling the world's oceans, thereby creating their currents and tides. And this description is echoed in the human body by the flow and exchange of cerebrospinal fluid, esoterically known as Christ oil, because on average, the entire volume of CSF in the body is replaced four times per day, i.e. every six hours. So Niflhelm can be interpreted as raw Christ energy, oil or soma, the inert substance in the body that needs to be transformed for spiritual awakening. Then we have Muspelheim, which is parallel with Kundalini fire. It's the agony portion, the polar opposite of the soma, that polarity of the joy, dual force within. So integration of Muspelheim fire 
and Niflheim Soma plays a crucial role in the process of spiritual awakening and the preservation of the sacred secretion because this notion is parallel to prana and apana or to the soma and agni of the Hindu faith. So to facilitate the rise of the kundalini energy, the muspelheim fire, one must confront and integrate the shadow aspects stored in hell and transform their Nifelheim. Practices like yoga, pranayama or breath work and energy healing can help in charging and transforming Nifelheim. Once the energies of hell and Nifelheim are integrated with Maspelheim, it can rise through the chakras, purifying and awakening each one of those energy centers, leading to a state of higher consciousness. Um, the middle of Yggdrasil, which is the trunk, is also referred to as Midgard and is said to be the place where human beings live. In theory, if the roots represent the subtle aspects of the body, the trunk would be the physical spine. Thirdly, the branches, which are called Asgard, are said to be the home of the Asir, the gods. In the esoteric framework where Muspelheim is parallel to Kundalini fire, Asgard represents the higher spiritual realms and the crown chakra or Sarasrara in the body. Just as Asgard is the realm of light and divinity, the crown chakra is associated with illumination, clarity and the realization of spiritual truth. It represents the pinnacle of spiritual development and the achievement of enlightenment as we grow along the spiritual path. In Buddhism, the state of Nirvana is akin to reaching Asgard. It's the ultimate goal of spiritual practice where one transcends the cycle of death and rebirth and attains the, their perfect peace, their, their transcendental state, their enlightenment state. And the Christian concept of heaven is also parallel to Asgard, representing the ultimate union with God and the divine realm. Um, now let's take a look at Odin, uh, the all-father in Norse mythology. Odin is a figure of profound wisdom and sacrifice, often depicted in his armour with his two ravens, Huggin and Munin, who symbolise thought and memory. Odin's quest for knowledge and spiritual power parallels various esoteric traditions where the initiate is seeking deeper understanding, like all of us are. At the base of Yggdrasil, that holy tree, parallel with the Muladhara, lies the fountain of Mimir, a well of profound wisdom. Odin's willingness to sacrifice one of his eyes to drink from this fountain symbolizes the relinquishment of mundane perception to gain higher spiritual insights, to relinquish the everyday illusion to attain truth um, and visionary seership. This act represents the opening of the third eye, the single eye or the Anya chakra, which grants deeper understanding as we know and you know that sense of connection to the divine. 
If thine eye be single, then the whole body shall be full of light. Furthermore, Odin was sacrificed on Yggdrasil, which mirrors the crucifixion of Christ. Odin hung on the tree or the cross for nine days and nights to gain what's known as the knowledge of the runes or of higher knowing. This act of self-sacrifice and resurrection signifies the death of the ego and the awakening to higher spiritual truth. It symbolizes the journey through suffering and transcendence which leads to spiritual rebirth, to the resurrection. And this brings us on to the sword of Odin. Odin gains his sword, his rod or his staff after his crucifixion on the tree. Odin's sword supplies him with many metaphysical powers such as the power to discern truth in character and situation, subduing his enemies, the ability to heal wounds on himself and others, and even the ability to raise the dead. So in, again, we see a lot of parallels there between these symbols and the symbols of other religions and teachings. In the context of Kundalini Yoga, the union of Ida and Pingala, the two primary energy channels of the body, is essential for the awakening of the Sushumna, the central channel of the spine through which Kundalini rises. And the Sushumna is parallel with Odin's sword. This sword or Sushumna is a beam of charged light or energy, like a lightsaber that manifests at the height of spiritual awakening. To awaken the sword of spiritual power, one must transmute the lunar and solar atoms within the organism, again, symbolized by Niflheim and Muspelheim, again, equal to Soma and Agni, Shiva and Shakti, fire and water. Um, you know, we see this polarity across the board in all the different faiths and religion. So in transmuting the lunar and solar atoms within the organism, we see that Niflheim, the realm of ice, represents the lunar atoms, the cooling energies, while Muspelheim, the realm of fire, represents the solar atoms, the heating energies. The courageous act of balancing and transmuting these energies within ourselves leads to super consciousness awakening leads us to the su successful preservation and raising of the sacred secretion and the release of the biochemicals of enlightenment that we've spoken about so many times. With the awakened sword, Odin's sword or the Shumna of spiritual power, we can confront um, and overcome our internal enemies that are represented in Norse mythology as hunding. And these internal enemies are the lower aspects of the self, such as ignorance, ego, and negative emotions or harmful emotions. The process of spiritual awakening involves recognizing and integrating these aspects leading to um, harmony, inner harmony and enlightenment. And the birth of new consciousness is symbolized by the birth of Jesus Christ in the manger, the Nordic Midgard of the world, followed by the subsequent challenges that are posed by Herod or by hunding, which both represent those lower base energies, those destructive forces. 
So let's finish by looking at the Hyperboreas. Uh, the Hyperboreas is the area beyond the north. Hyper means beyond and Boreas is the land of the north. Nordic teachings say that the fourth dimension known as the land of Avalon lies beyond the north. Hyperboreas is said to be ruled by solar beings, divine entities associated with the sun. And according to ancient legends, Hyperborea was home to two great virgins, Hyperosha and Laodicea, who descended from the fourth dimension, the Hyperboreas, into the third dimension, the Midgard. Hyperosha and Laodicea, those two virgins, represent more than just mythological figures or characters. They're symbolic of the higher chakras, the spiritual centers within the body. Some of you will know that in the book of Revelation, John, who is a symbol for the soul of man, refers to the church of Laodicea which is parallel to the Ajna Chakra, to the third eye chakra. So the wisdom and knowledge of the fourth dimension, the Hyperboreas, embodied by Hyperosha and Laodicea, shows the descent of knowledge and inspiration coming into the third dimension, into this 3D reality, or equally into our bodies and understanding, or the flow of knowledge from higher dimensions of consciousness descending into the physical and emotional aspects of human existence. In this context, Gnosis, which is the pursuit of esoteric knowledge and spiritual enlightenment, is seen as the wisdom of the Hyperboreans. This myth serves as an allegory for the journey of spiritual awakening, where one ascends from the lower states of consciousness to higher, more enlightened states through the acquisition of divine knowledge. And Hyperboreas is also reminiscent of what's known in science as the electromagnetic torus field. So let's take a look at that. As mentioned in this previous video, in an alchemy parallels between Earth and the body, macrocosm versus microcosm, the brain and the North Pole. What's known as the Aurora Borealis was historically known as the Hyperborei. Aurora Borealis, or the Northern Lights, are formed by the rotational forces of Earth's toroidal energy field. This spiraling force at the North Pole can be seen as the entry point of cosmic energy into the Earth's atmosphere, or even the point where light energy begins to manifest as matter. So into us on the microcosm or into the Earth on the macrocosm. And we've seen that the word hyper means beyond, but what's interesting is that bore has several synergistic meanings like shaft, axle, tree, or tunnel, which brings us back to the trunk of Yggdrasil, of the world tree, which is like a portal or, or um, a shaft, yes, of divine energy that would be aligned with the spine within us. We can easily interpret the shaft formed by Earth's Taurus and indeed our individual Taurus fields as tunnels, as portals 
to the beyond, i.e. beyond this 3D manifest world, beyond these illusions, to the point where divine knowledge enters into the human psyche and we begin to upgrade our consciousness and understand realms beyond our physical means. A bore is also the name for a high tidal wave. And in Frozen 2, Elsa's true identity was found beyond the tidal wave of the North Sea. And again, this is a nod to the fourth dimension portal at Hyperboreas, which we each glean visionary intelligence and divine inspiration from. So in conclusion, the Northern Path is a profound allegory for the spiritual journey, integrating elements from Norse mythology, Kundalini energy, and other esoteric traditions. It emphasizes the importance of self-awareness, transformation, and the pursuit of divine knowledge from those 4D plus realms to achieve spiritual enlightenment and higher consciousness. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, the links to my books and my course and my uh, regeneration calendar, which gives you your sacred secretion days at a very easy glance. All of those links are in the description box below this video. May divine love manifest itself in you all, always and in all ways. Namaste.